place. A veil has been put over the eyes of humanity. Evil people in high places have been hiding the truth in plain sight and building a false reality on lies and deception for far too long. And now, their time is coming to an end. It's time to fight back, to wake up, and to begin an uprising. Now is a time for judgment. This is a time for judgment. Welcome to today's show. If you followed my work over the years in exposing the agendas of these, let's just call them satanic scumbags, because that's what they are. I've talked a lot about cannibalism, the normalizing of cannibalism. Years ago, when I used to talk about this, people th thought I had 50 heads. And I've just shown article after article from how they're normalizing it, from Time Magazine to other science publications talking about how youthful blood was going to cure Alzheimer's. To the vampire facials, all these celebrities are just bathing in blood and we're supposed to believe it's normal. To all the music videos where they're taking the blood baptism baths, right? Thing after thing to Santa Clarita diet, normalizing and then making it comedy and then telling you, uh, well, being, cannibal, being a cannibal is going to make you healthier and live longer. Would you do it then? Would you do it then? And these sickos actually debate this. They're like, yeah, maybe I would if it was going to make me live longer. To like articles from Snapchat, you might remember in the past, covering Snapchat. Well, here we have another article that just came out from the New York Times. Remember, in this country, in America, if you're not from America, I'll let you know. The New York Times is looked at as like one of the most credible sources. Okay? It's about as credible as CNN. It's an absolute joke. It's a liberal, lunatic uh, type of uh, newspaper, or whatever you want to call it. I mean, it has fallen and fallen bad. All they do is write... Just the most ridiculous propaganda. And, you know, so when people look at me and they say I have ten heads, then why are things like this constantly coming out? I'm showing you the repetition and the pattern, okay, of how often they're doing this. Don't you realize that this is how they normalize this stuff? They start planting seeds and desensitizing you, telling you that sooner or later cannibalism is going to be needed. Oh, we might die of starvation, so maybe we should just consume our loved ones instead of burying them. People will be too broke to bury them anyway, right? Oh, maybe we should just drink our baby's blood because it will make our skin look better. It's anti-aging and it can cure also This type of garbage propaganda. Look at this. A taste for cannibalism. A spat of recent stomach-churning books, TV shows, and films suggest we've never looked so delicious to one another. Oh, uh, what? And people still don't see that this is the cult, normalizing the occult practice, the stuff they do in darkness. The stuff they do in secrecy. This is what they do. This is why you always see it in movies and music video. Videos. Over and over. What do you think? Some guy's just like, I want to make a music video. It's a love song, but I want to eat my partner. Oh, okay, that sounds really cool. What? Huh? But we're just so desensitized because we see it over and over and over. Zombies. What do you think the whole purpose is? Zombies eating the brains. Now you can correlate the zombie apocalypse with what's occurred over the last two years. It's pretty easy to see. It says an image came... Uh, this is the article from the New York Times. An image came to Chelsea G. Summers, a boyfriend accidentally on purpose hit by a car, some quick work with a corkscrew and his liver served Tuscan style on toast. That figment of her twisted imagination is what prompted Miss Summers to write her novel, A Certain Hunger, about a restaurant critic with a taste for male human flesh. Oh, very interesting. For those of you out there who are like younger, and I know people who are like my age who like tried to be actors or tried to be writers or you know what I mean? Everybody know tried to be a singer. And I've always just tried to tell them, why would you waste your time? Okay? Because it's all controlled. These people that get their books published, it's all part of the system. You think, oh, this is so original. This woman, a figment of her twisted imagination, she writes a book about a restaurant critic with a taste for human flesh. Never heard that before. I mean, Hannibal Lecter, only about nine million movies and books vampires drinking the blood right but they get published and they get pushed and they get promoted because that's how they desensitize people so turns out cannibalism has a time and a place in the pages of some recent stomach churning books and on television and film screens miss summers and others suggest that the time for cannibalism is now is that right mrs summers i think the time for you to be put in a padded room is now but these people are going to be practicing these satanic rituals in public. I mean, that's the whole purpose of coming out of the shadows and doing this out in the open. That's everything you see with the gender stuff. That has everything to do with NAMBLA and the age limits that are going to be on kids, with kids picking their genders at a young age. And like I've shown over the years, where people said I was crazy, showing you how they adult kids 
okay? But putting kids in adult situations in TV shows, reality shows, TV series, from Stranger Things, right? The kids are the heroes, to Top Chef, the, you know, kids Top Chef, to Dancing with the Stars kids version. I mean, it's just been an unbelievable amount of garbage that they've pushed out. And then they have the kids act smarter than the adults, like the kid on Modern Family, and they go on and on and on and on. Well, that's the same thing here with cannibalism. So this psychopath says the time for it's now. Or is that hate speech? Am I hurting her feelings? Because we have these wicked people who are just working for the New York Times, for Netflix, for all the media outlets out there who get us all silenced, and then they pump out this crap. And they're like, oh, it's just fantasy, but wouldn't it be interesting or kooky? Maybe I would try it, right? From Megyn Kelly. Is her name Megan? Megan Fox? You know, drinking Machine Gun Kelly's blood. I mean, what, how do you not see it at this point if you're somebody who listens and you think that I'm out of my mind? I mean, how do you not... Take the wall down in your head. You might find some cobwebs in there. So there's Yellow Jackets, a Showtime series about a high school woman's soccer team stranded in the woods for a few months too many, which premiered November. The film Fresh, released on Hulu in March, involves an underground human meat trade for the rich. I covered that, too, in a video, which I think has since been deleted. Uh, Latvona, a novel published in June, portrays cannibalism in a medieval village overcome by plague and drought. Oh, tell us more. Can anyone see what this pattern is? Is it, oh, that people are just becoming really interested in cannibalism. So all of these sickly, mentally ill people are writing books and movies about cannibalism. It's only been going on forever. It's only the whole purpose of zombies and vampires and Santa Clarita Diet and Sabrina the Teenage Witch. I mean... I'm shining brighter than ever with Dash Pass. It's full of big savings with no delivery fees on everything I need to stay cool. So cool. Oh. Sign up for the biggest savings and exclusive items with Dash Pass.
and in accordance with Hollywood law, her life force was infused into me, bringing me back from the dead. Smithies, I'm back in the pink, full of pith and vinegar. That's remarkable, sir. You know, it's funny, Smithies. I tried every tincture and poultice and tonic and patent medicine there is. And all I really needed was the blood of a young boy. I do like the way that I feel. I have endless energy and I sleep two hours a night. I get so much done. You eat people. I know. It's just that I'm so much more confident. I can parallel park in one mo- So I guess if you want to be rich and successful, just write a book about cannibalism. I mean, really. It's unbelievable. 
So uh, this book in June came out about medieval village overcome by plague and drought. And don't forget how they're going to twist this and they're going to tell you it's healthy for you. That's going to be the last step in this. And you might sit there and you might be like, yeah, okay, call. Oh, excuse me. Okay, time, whatever. <laughs> you might sit there and you go, um, I don't think people are going to agree to cannibal. Oh, yeah? If it's beaten into their heads enough, they will. Have you seen what people have done to their bodies the last two years? Have you seen the effects of that and what it's done to people? The majority of people? Yeah, I think if they're willing to take something like that, where they even tell you that it's not going to heal you and it's not going to make you immune, that if they're told that they can have young-looking skin and have more energy, that they'll line up and they'll do it because that's what suckers do. They do what they're told and they conform. Oh, boy. So the article goes on to talk about... (laughs) It goes on to talk about a film called Raw by director and screenwriter Julie... Dr. Julia Douchebag tells the story of a vegetarian student whose taste for meat escalates after consuming raw offal. Still to come is Bones and All, starring... T- I mean, how many of these... Are, these are all new movies. They're not even talking about, like, Hannibal Lecter. Still to come is Bones and All, starring Timothy Clamett. The movie about a young love that becomes a lust for human consumption is expected to be released later this year. Oh, well, it just sounds like you're releasing a book or a movie every month about this. I thought you guys were supposed to be original and artistic and creative. And does anyone know an audience that actually wants to read about consuming other people's flesh? Oh, right, they'd be like the liberal maniac type people that we live amongst. Because, you know, this is normal. These people are psychotic, to say the least. It says, can you stomach it? A fascination with cannibalism, perhaps, not surprisingly, can tow a fine line, as Miss Summers learned while writing A Certain Hunger, when fact-checkers came calling about the frenzied scenes in which the, books, the book prepares her murdered lovers with grotesque, uh, <laughs> with grotesque actions. Their queries about the intricacies of human butchery left Miss Summers so disturbed that she went full raw vegan for two weeks. Well, why don't you tell us how you came up with the ideas, Miss Summers, how you just came up with all these ideas on how to dissect people. Right? I mean, I'm not a believer in pre-crime, okay? And I know that the liberal people are a believer in pre-crime. Like, they'd like to see us all arrested just based on disagreeing with them. But I think maybe we could have an investigation, kind of like uh, James Alifanis with the stuff he posted on Instagram. Like, maybe it was open to investigation when you got kids wearing nothing and having pizza held over their crotches. You know, I think maybe you want to investigate that. Same here, where these people are just coming up with these freaky... Oh, no, it's just imagination and art, right? Oh, right, right. Talking about precise ways to slice people, dismember them, and plan them on a platter. Yeah, and we live amongst these people. We have padded rooms waiting for me and you because these people actually think that they're normal. They're sick, and I cannot wait for God to get vengeance. I cannot wait. You see, publishers may have been uh, a little alarmed with Miss Summers, who uses a, a pseudonym, was shopping the book around in 2018. It was rejected more than 20 times. I'm sure, I'm sure. Before Audible, an unnamed press made an offer, right? And then it just gets picked up. And then the New York Times just writes an article about it. And then that article, of course, gets a ton of press because they want it to spread in the mainstream so they could desensitize people and go, ooh, did you hear about that? Ooh, would you eat a person? Ooh, because that's what they continually do. And so people become so desensitized. And then the next thing they hear instead of, ooh, is it taboo to talk about, is, hey, the benefits. And they're like, oh, the benefits. Tell me more. I wouldn't be surprised if they came out and told you that this was the cure for the one-niner, which would surprise you, and that these people would go and do it. I mean, come on. Let's be realistic about how stupid the people are we live amongst. So it goes on to talk about her book. She's 59. She lives in New York. Um, just pretty much promoting this. And obviously, if you follow my channel, I put clips in, obviously, many, many times about cannibalism. Anytime I saw anything that was being promoted from Santa Clarita Diet to uh, Sabrina the Teenage Witch to the New York Times is like notorious for doing this. I've covered multiple times where they've done articles talking about how cannibalism set up the hierarchy for our government. So based on cannibalism, they formed the I mean, they've just constantly been prepping people for this. It's, you know, people I don't know what can surprise you at this point. Look at the stuff they're doing with kids. I was just talking about it on the website. Look what they're doing to children. Look what they want to do to children. Look what they have planned to stick in children and on top of all the other crazy stuff with the gender. Okay? I mean, you don't th- you think this is out of the realm of possibility? I mean, really? 
The ones with the fascination and the obsession with this from the mainstream. They're telling you in this article, like, well, mainstream so celebrities and people are obsessed with it. Oh, are they? Or are you just conditioning everyone? Oh, because that's what you're doing. You're conditioning people with your sick satanic filth. And then they like to do, like I covered last week, Stranger Things, and they like to put the character in there as the victim, the Satanist, you know, the Dungeons and Dragons kid, and he's such a good, and then the bad guys, the Christians, who think that this stuff is horrible, and people are actually doing it. Well, they're telling you they're doing it. And they're desensitizing you, then they're programming you, and they're inverting everything. The Bible tells us all of this. All of it. So none of us should be surprised, but it's just kind of crazy to see. Because I think when I was younger, I looked at it and I said, hmm, are people really going to be on board like like this, you know, the falling away and Christians turning cold. Well, can you see it now? Can you feel it now? Look around us. I mean, you know, the satanic panic in the 80s was nothing compared to this. At least then, some of these stories were getting out about these schools and what they were doing with these children. Now, they don't even have, no stories get out. And if they do, they just go, oh, please, please. And they roll their eyes. Well, all they do in the mainstream is promote cannibalism, Satanism, filth, perversion. It's a freaking nightmare we live in. It's an absolute nightmare. And I don't know how blind you have to be to not see it. But the answer is like, well, I'd say Stevie Wonder blind, but he's not really blind. We'll say like, uh, was it Mr. Magoo blind? I don't know. Let's just say you were born and then you just had your eyeballs completely removed from your skull because that's how blind people are. They don't even have blurred vision. They have none whatsoever. And they still see this stuff. They're like, oh, gosh, you can believe this? This guy, this YouTuber, it's time for judgment. He's all upset about this stuff. And they just think everything's a big joke. And then what they, the things they get upset about are like comical if you disagree. I mean, it's a, the world has gone insane. And they're openly telling you what's coming. And I've been openly trying to warn people. We'll see what ends up happening. But maybe I won't be around to deal with it. Maybe none of us will be. But it's an absolute nightmare out there.